Hey, and welcome back to our channel. Today you're gonna know why most of the snakes do not mess with the turtles and what are other animals that can resist or even kill the snakes. Also, we're gonna talk about turtles' main predators. So grab yourself a cup of tea and once you're ready, let's get started. Hi, and welcome back to the Fact Pack channel, where we pack the amazingness from all over the world. So make yourself comfortable and once you're ready, let's get started. Turtles have hardy shells, which make them a difficult food to digest. So instead of a whole turtle, snakes usually prefer turtles' eggs. However, snakes like anaconda and common king snake are known to devour turtles in the wild. Other than that, turtles aren't the best food choice for snakes. Why wouldn't a snake kill a turtle? A snake wouldn't have a problem eating soft amphibians like frogs, salamanders and other rodents. However, turtles would be a bad choice for snakes to consume. Snakes do not have teeth, so they have to swallow their prey whole. And yes, their mouths can stretch far wide to fit animals thrice their head size. However, it is the digestion part that will be tricky for snakes. Turtle shells are not only big but have rough edges too. And when a snake tries to swallow a turtle, its internal organs will suffer. So it's a zero-sum game for both. The turtle may lose its life, but so will the snake. However, as I mentioned before, some snakes can consume turtles along with their shells. Here are some of them. And first is anaconda. Usually snakes wrap their prey and strangle them till they are out of breath. However, it isn't that easy with turtles. Turtles' hard shells can tolerate most snakes' strangling force and they won't be out of breath because they will hide inside their shell. However, anaconda's grip is a different thing. We are talking about one of the largest snakes in the world which can overpower even jaguars. On top of that, unlike other snakes, anacondas have teeth which they use to hold their prey while constricting. As for preying on smaller freshwater turtles, a full-grown anaconda will not have to go through the trouble of constricting, as their jaws will be flexible enough to swallow these turtles in a single gulp. King snakes. These snakes are larger than normal snakes and can grow up to 60 inches in length. They are also constrictors like anacondas, meaning they wrap themselves around their prey to restrain their movement. They have been known to feed on turtles' eggs. That's possible because they have a keen sense of turtle's nest whereabouts. Here is footage of a king snake trying to eat a box turtle's eggs, even with the mother turtle present in the nest. Garter snake. These snakes often found near water bodies. Their main diet consists of amphibians, and they can grow up to 42 inches in length. Although they aren't powerful and large enough to devour adult turtles, they will feed on freshwater turtle eggs. In addition, some garter snakes have been found scavenging on dead turtle's flesh. Here is a clip of a garter snake trying to find a way into a turtle's shell to eat its flesh. Can snake eat turtle eggs? Yes, snakes will eat turtle eggs if they stumble upon them while searching for food. Some snakes, like king snakes, are particularly fond of eating turtle eggs, so they will use their acute senses to search turtle eggs. Then, they will wait outside the turtle's nest to devour eggs right after they are laid. Do turtles attract snakes? In general, turtles do not come under a snake's diet, so they necessarily do not attract snakes, but their eggs do. Snakes often search for turtle nests to eat their eggs, so if you happen to see snakes near your turtle's habitat, it is probably looking for an excellent timing to steal. Ok, so now you know why most of the snakes are not messing with turtles, and what are those who do. Let's now talk about other enemies of snakes. Actually, a whole bunch of different animal species kill snakes, including a ton of birds, owls, hawks, falcons, herons, etc. And many many snake species eat only other snakes. So mostly, birds and other snakes are the most common predators of snakes. But plenty of mammals get in the action too. Of course, humans are the biggest killers of the snakes, but I won't get preachy here. If you lived in Africa, Asia or Europe, you would be a bit luckier when faced with snake issues and might be able to own a mongoose. The mongoose is a remarkable creature. Not only it is easily domesticated and friendly to boot, it has a natural affinity for killing snakes. Snakes are on the menu for the mongoose. Though, this vassal-like animal will eat a variety of pest animals such as rodents, insects, worms and lizards. Due to specialized acetylcholine receptors within the body, the mongoose is immune to the effects of snake venom. This ability coupled with a thick coat of fewer makes it a formidable fighter when pitted against a deadly serpent. 
Due to their indiscriminate diet, this critter is not allowed to be imported into countries where it's not native. Serious ecosystem damage occurred in the West Indies when the mongoose was introduced to control snakes and rodents, but did irreversible damage to local wildlife instead. The same region of the world also has the talents of the honey badger, a carnivore that is immune to cobra venom and kills snakes by crushing their heads with its powerful jaws. This animal is fearless and has been known to chase away young lions from their kill. Few things can penetrate the skin of the honey badger and this helps it in the quest to find and eat snakes. Only adding to its reputation is the tendency to dig up human corpses and eat the remains. However, it is not only the exotic animals that can kill the snakes. Cats and dogs will occasionally tackle a non-venomous snake. However, the last thing you want is your best friend out in the yard doing battle with a deadly viper. The Scottish Terrier is one breed of dog that is adept at hunting down snakes, though, again, it has no immunity to venom. This breed was created for the purpose of hunting rodents and snakes, something that is now instinctually ingrained into its behavior. Nature does have a way of controlling snakes, but they certainly are not at the top of the food chain. One of the natural predators of venomous and non-venomous snakes is the hedgehog. You wouldn't think this docile, feeling animal could take on a deadly snake, but it's true. The hedgehog has a fantastic defense against almost any attack. Pointed spikes all over the body make biting this tiny creature most unpleasant. Because a snake strikes quickly and without a premeditated destination, the serpent encounters a mouthful of spikes. When the hedgehog thinks the snake has been debilitated enough, it will clamber on top of the reptile and bite through its vertebrae. A natural resistance to venom helps the hedgehog survive numerous snake strikes. However, it is not immune to venom like the mongoose. Birds are also big fans of snake meat, and an old hawk or secretary bird has no issue picking up a snake and either crushing it with their talons or dropping the snake from a ridiculous height to kill it. Snakes are very cautious of birds, part of the reasons why serpents are so reluctant to slither through wide open spaces like a moth lawn. Quick snake prevention tip, keep your grass short. If the birds don't get the snake, there's a good chance that another snake might just do the job instead. Snakes are their own predators, and if one serpent is larger than the other, the smaller reptile might become dinner. The king snake is one of the most feared cannibals of the snake world. This snake's primary food is other snakes, and even though it is not venomous, it has no problem taking on rattlesnakes. Unfortunately, for the rattlesnake, king snakes are immune to the rattles' venom. Cobras are another serpent known to be cannibalistic. The cobra's given name in science actually means snake eater. Other wild animals that can best a venomous snake are the bobcat and the wolverine. Both of these predators have thick coats and agile reflexes, making them good adversaries for a snake. While armadillos do not make it a habit to eat snakes, they have been known to throw themselves at serpents, using their armor to cut snakes down. Worst case scenario, if the birds, badgers, bobcats, wolverines and other snakes aren't successful, the timid armadillo might just do the trick. While armadillos do not make it a habit to eat snakes, they have been known to throw themselves at serpents, using their armor to cut snakes down. Even domestic animals have their fair share of snake killing abilities. Hoofed animals are naturally fearful of snakes, especially horses, calves and pigs. Even though we have domesticated these creatures, the instinctual need to protect their legs will never go away. In the wild, a horse that received a snake bite would not be able to keep up with the herd and would be easy prey for wolves and other predators. For this reason, grazers will ruthlessly stomp a snake to death if one is in the area. The snake might be lucky and the horse or cow might just run away. However, if the animal is the herd leader, then the snake is as good as dead. While proficient at snake killing, Hoofed animals aren't the only domesticated creatures that are good at this type of job. Chickens and game fowl, especially turkeys, are diligent snake fighters. These birds like to eat snakes and if the serpent is small enough, they will gobble it down. This doesn't mean that a fair share of birds won't die from snake bites. Chickens have no immunity to snake venom, though their feathers might provide a natural insulation against puncture wounds from fangs. Now let's talk about turtles. Who are their enemies? 
Turtles include tortoises, which live on land, freshwater terrapins, and turtles that live in the sea. All of these animals possess shells made of bone, into which they can retreat if attacked. Two species, the box turtle and the hinge-back turtle, have shells that close completely. Despite this protection, turtles fall prey to numerous animals. For example, to hungry birds. Bearded vultures seize turtles and fly high above the ground to release the reptile, typically over rocky ground or onto large rocks or boulders. These vultures will repeat this exercise if the shell of the turtle does not break after the first attempt. Then it feeds on the flesh of the turtle, which is now easily accessible. Crows also prey on the turtle, western swamp in particular, while other carnivorous birds, including ravens and herons, are happy to include turtles to their menus. Carnivorous Mammals Numerous mammals prey on turtles. One of them are raccoons, who are capable predators and will normally carry a turtle to a safe area where they can eat it without being disturbed. Coyotes and foxes prey on turtles too, as do some domestic dogs. In many cases, the individual dog is merely playing with the reptile, but if its teeth manage to puncture vital organs, then the game becomes fatal. Opossums, wessels, skunks and ferrets will all kill turtles if given the opportunity. Even domestic cats sometimes will kill young turtles. In some instances, these animals bite at and chew any part that the turtle cannot retract deeply enough into its shell. Reptiles and Amphibians Some mature frogs attempt to eat small freshwater turtles in the absence of more suitable prey. The Nile monitor eats turtle eggs and hatchlings, while crocodiles and alligators eat adult turtles. Mature alligators, which can weigh up to 500 pounds, are capable of easily killing mature turtles. Great White Shark Food The Great White Shark, which is capable of killing a person with one bite, often includes sea turtles in its diet of fish and marine mammals. This huge shark often charges its prey from underneath. The Great White effectively plows into the turtle with its open mouth so that marine reptile has no chance of escape. So even though turtles have such a good protection as their shell, they still are prey to a huge list of animals, and there are many ways to kill the turtle despite its natural armor. A common myth regarding turtles is that they can leave their shell for another. However, this is not the case. Did you know that a turtle's shell is made out of a bone and is a part of the turtle's spine? A turtle's shell is as much a part of its body as our skeleton is to ours. The shell is made of two pieces, the carapace, top, and the plastron, bottom, which are fused together on each side of what's called a bridge. The carapace is covered by an outer layer of individual pieces called scutes. These are made of keratin, just like your hair and nails. Who knew you had so much in common with our reptilian neighbors? A turtle's shell is its armor and its ultimate protection from many of the dangers of the outer world. But once that strong shell is cracked or broken, it leaves the turtle vulnerable to infection, bacteria, and predation by other animals. Though turtles are resilient, a severe injury to the shell could cost the turtle its life. The anatomical origin of the shell is fascinating. The shell is the ribcage, sternum, and vertebrae of the turtle. They are united to form one cohesive unit. The shell has a variety of functions within and across the order of testudines. Protection is likely the most common and obvious function when one thinks of a shell. This fact is undeniable, for example, that the shells of the eastern box turtle Terrapini carolina have shown evidence of surviving attacks from predators and even fires. But the shell serves so many more functions than protection. Let us examine a few examples. The shell of the African leopard tortoise serves to help with camouflage. Researchers have observed that populations of this tortoise found in drier habitats have shells that are paler in coloration than populations found in wetter environments with darker soils. Another example is the gullar projection found on the plastron of the male African sport tortoise, which functions to injure other tortoises during breeding season combats. In case of the green sea turtle and a number of other aquatic turtles, their shells are dorsal ventrally flattened. This more flattened shape is advantageous because it is more hydrodynamic within their aquatic environment. Clearly, there are many advantages to having a shell. They can provide protection, camouflage, serve as the weapons during breeding season or help a turtle swim faster. 
In my opinion, the disadvantages of having a shell are just as fascinating as the advantages. An obvious example is the reputation that tortoises have for being slow. And a clear explanation for this phenomenon is that their shell limits their limp mobility. But I assure you that any vertebrate would likely have limited mobility if both their shoulder and hip girdles were somehow located within their ribcage. So as we look on the turtle, there is a clear trade-off between losing mobility in exchange for gaining durability. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give us a like if you had a good time and share it with your friends. See you in the next videos.